teaching is magic. To make the magic really work though, we need to do more than just talk. We need to do more than stand there and tell students what to think. Whether they realize it or not, in order to fully understand and retain knowledge, students themselves must be participants in the process. There is abundant empirical evidence that for what we might call real lasting learning to take place, students must be actively involved, not passively receiving information. In addition, the more passive they are, the less likely they are to retain the information which they gather. For the lecturer, active learning means developing and implementing activities to engage students as partners. Active learning is taking place when students are discussing issues, solving problems, sharing among themselves and applying what they have learned. In this way, they become engaged in the acquisition of the knowledge. So, active learning is anything content related that you have your students do that is not merely watching, listening or taking notes. As we will see, this will often mean that there is need for students to think out loud and to walk about in the class and that's okay. This all sounds wonderful, but we have content to cover. We have course outlines to complete. I can hear the objections. Sure, we know this. The idea here, though, is that we keep the lecture format, but we avoid making lecturing the only thing we do. We mix it up. So, we suggest that the class be divided into 15-minute blocks each separated by short active learning segments. In any one hour, there may be three such segments, each lasting five minutes, maybe less. To begin, we have an interactive segment, letting the students know what lies ahead and brainstorming on a central concept, perhaps. This helps to lay a foundation of the knowledge which they already have and on which you are going to be building for the next hour or so. It sets the stage for active learning to take place. Another active learning segment might be designed to have students assessed in some way on the material which you have presented. In this way, we build assessment into the class ensuring that our objectives are being met. Other segments can involve small groups of no more than three students, say. What they do is guided by the objectives which you have set for the class. So, depending on the subject area and the particular content being delivered that day, students could be formed to answer a question or, on content which has just been delivered in the last 15-minute block, say. They could solve a short problem, they could outline the solution for a longer problem, or really whatever might be relevant. And these groupings are possible even in lecture theatres with fixed seats, since students will be sharing with their immediate neighbours. Cooperative learning also promotes active learning. Let us focus on a strategy known as the jigsaw method, which involves cooperative learning. The method allows for students to teach themselves through teaching others. It can be a means of introducing new content or of having students practice the application of procedures. In this demo, students learn how to improve on existing thesis statements. First, the lecturer sets a scene by presenting students with the background needed. What we're going to look at is writing effective thesis statements. There are six elements that you need to keep in mind. First, a thesis statement is a single sentence. It also limits the topic. It's an opinion, not a topic. It gives you an idea of what kind of support the topic needs. It also organizes the topic. And lastly, it needs to be stated very precisely. 
Students now form themselves into groups of four with their immediate neighbors. Four different exercises, each numbered sequentially one through four, are distributed to each group, and each student becomes associated with an exercise number. Well, that's nice. Okay, what kind of answers do you have? Do you have anything? Yes, I do. Okay, what about you? Yeah, we finish. Now that we know how to identify an effective thesis, we're going to learn how to write it. Okay. Please look at the bottom of your worksheet. Everybody has a numbered thesis. I would like all of you with a number one to form a group here, all number twos behind me, number three over here, and number four over here. Now students regroup by exercise number so that all students assigned number one are in the same group and those assigned number two are in a separate group and so on. Each exercise group comes to an understanding of that exercise, thinks about it individually first perhaps and then together as a group. They each prepare to give a five-minute presentation on it and become experts on their thesis statement. They have done this through thinking and through sharing, brainstorming with others, picking it apart, and coming to terms together with how the statement might be improved. Note that during this time, the lecturer moves around from group to group, ensuring that understanding is taking place and guiding the thinking of the students. Original groups now reform. Each student in the group is an expert on the thesis statement they are associated with. Each in turn explains to the group how their thesis statement ought to be revised and why. According to what Ms. All right, yeah. According to what Ms. All right, according to what Mrs. Newman said earlier, you see that we have a very broad statement here. There are um, words in there like media and minorities that are very broad. You have different facets of media, so we're going to, I broke it down into television. Okay, we started out with a very general statement, nutrition is important in staying healthy. So what we did is that you find the key terms, which are nutrition and staying healthy. They are very general and they can be broken down or refined even more. So for nutrition, we refined it to something like having a balanced diet because that's a part of staying healthy. Um, that's a part of nutrition and taking care of yourself. The session ends with a plenary where problems are discussed and students, now familiar with all four thesis statements, are asked to suggest ways in which the statements might organize the essay. It is during the plenary that students are invited to make the links between components so as to view the topic as a whole and to reflect on what they have learned. We must point out that this method works in any subject area and with any topic that has between three and five components to it. The components can but need not be new knowledge for the students. They are often parts of one topic with the plenary allowing for the coming together of all aspects, a piecing together of the puzzle. Importantly, students learn from their peers and are responsible for teaching what they have learnt so that they become partners in their own learning. This takes a focus away from the teacher who becomes more like a facilitator. It requires a full participation and engagement of every student in the group. So students don't learn how to write thesis statements from hearing how they ought to be written. They learn by doing, by constructing their own learning. In this and other active learning activities, the higher order learning of Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives is being focused on. Since, as we have seen, they promote problem solving and critical thinking, and since they allow for the manipulation of materials, analysis, synthesis, and the evaluation of the information. Students will have experienced deep learning both effective and long-lasting, and our role as facilitator will have been well executed.
We invite you to try some of these active learning activities and to watch the magic unfold.